In this tutorial, we're going to take this photo bash image that we put together in the last episode and then we're going to make it look painterly, like this. How? By painting a few drops on top of the actual thing. So, this is episode number three of a digital painting series for photo bashing. And if you haven't checked the, uh, the last episodes, go to the links below this video and check the episode number one, okay? Uh, I'm listing episode one and episode two. Okay, so let's continue. This is where we left off. And if you want to follow along, you can download the project files and continue on step seven, okay? The next couple of things that we're gonna do are first to change the colors of the images so they mix uh, together a little bit better and then we're gonna go in and paint over them. For that we're going to use some image adjustments. Okay, let's continue. The first thing I do is that this is the image but I realize that step 7 has the color already in. This is a layer that adds color. Let me just remove everything so you can see and I'm going to put a white background in here so you can see what the color is doing. Actually, no, you cannot see it. Maybe you need uh, some, any other, like, I, I'm moving some color. Can you see some yellow that I'm moving in here? Like, ooh, this yellow that I'm moving. How, it's very subtle, but it, it's there. So what's going on in here is that I have all these images and have this yellow. Let me undo all of this. There you go. Now it's in position. So what I did was this. I create, let me just create a new layer from scratch. Yeah, so you, I named that color and this time I'm calling it color two. And then I click the brush tool, but for this I'm going to use soft bound, so, soft round I mean, and then reduce the opacity and the flow to around 50. And in other software, I believe you only have opacity, that's okay. In Clip Studio, it's, I believe opacity and what is the other one? Density, I believe. Instead of flow in there, it's called density. And so what I do is I'm going to take some of this yellow, for example, from these trees. I just press Alt and then click to select that and then just start painting over this. Now, this looks horrible, right? Like, uh, what's that? Yeah, but if instead of having it as a normal layer, I select a color layer, now it's painting that color right? I could select this green, for example, and make that element green or select this part of the sky and put it there, right? So this is very interesting. Like I can make all of these more yellowy or I could desaturate the whole thing and just paint gray on top on all of that, right? So it's, it's a very interesting effect that you can do. That's what I do. And so that's one of the things that I like to do. Very subtle, I like to create a color layer and kind of tint the image a little bit so it, it matches more, more correctly, okay? So that's what I'm gonna be doing. I'm doing that in fast forward, taking uh, like some colors from the sky, like you can see right here, that color from the sky, and then start painting and putting that all over the place, right, very carefully. And then desaturate those greens and in general, just bringing in the castle instead of being way too uh, white, I'm making it a little bit yellowy. Now, this is the first step to make this a little bit painterly. I go to filter menu and then I go to filter gallery right here. And then from the filter gallery, I select the one on the where it says artistic and then paint dubs and then I just play for with the settings the brush size right now is seven sharpness zero the brush type is simple right and then I play around with that with those settings and now you can see that it's starting to look a little bit painterly right and then I do the same with the the trees but for the trees I use some other settings like you can see that for this one I'm using the sharpness number three and the brush size number four Right? So this is up to your taste and this is the end result of how it makes it a little bit more painterly. And then for the, the mountains, I'm focusing on the mountains in there. I'm using different, uh, testing different types 
And the one that I liked is dark rough and brush size really big, like number 24, right? And in the end, I end up with something like this. Now I'm going to change the color curves. For this, I press Ctrl M, right? And I ah, know this is the levels, Ctrl L. And then Ctrl M is for the curves. Let me show you live in Photoshop. In here is when you go to image adjustments. The ones that I'm using is levels and curves. Control M, Control L or Control M. Now let's go back to the recording. And I just make this really bright, right? How am I deciding? Well, because I have this reference image that I brought in and that's how bright I wanted my castle to look like, right? This is the reference. The link, again, you can have it below this video. You should have these links. And this is the castle reference. You can see it in the art station right there. Really cool castle. And so I continue and with the castle, now right, in, it's, it looks right now like super bright, but don't worry, we're going to fix it with some when we paint over it. Right now, I think this is okay. And with that, we are left with this image. A castle that is starting to look painterly, but it's not quite there, right? Like, okay, this is an improvement, but you can see there's a contour from all the filters that I used that is looking ugly. All of that is going to be fixed in the next couple of steps when we paint over it. So that's it for this episode. Now let's move on to video number four, where we're going to do the final touches on painting over it with the brush. Okay, remember to subscribe and like this video if you find it useful. Okay, see you in the next episode.